pretty well, and I know some of the old members, and uh, and you need people like Jerry here, Angie Mungsville, who Dhamma is your life. Now, for me, I did not start with these uh, lofty ideas like uh, I want to become a missionary, I want to become a, a social worker, and you know, the calling of the Dhamma and all this. We all started very simply. Okay, for me, I started because I was interested. In fact, I started as a little boy in Buddhist Union. And uh, I can tell you some miracles that I want to share with you more of the miracles that I come across. Buddhist Union uh, is one of the, in the 1960s and 70s, was something like uh, Buddhist fellowship today. Very well known. Because the monk could speak English, and in those days, very few monks could speak English. Or Mahayana. All right? And he's a Pranakan, and he really practices. During the Vasna period, all right, as a boy, I know, the three-month season, he would lock himself in a room. All right? For the three months practice. And food will always be delivered to him in the morning. He will have his meal and he will not, for three months, he will not entertain, not even the committee members. He practice meditation in his own room. All right? Uh, during the three months period. Occasionally, the secretary will talk to him, but the door is still closed unless it's important. So he's a very strong practitioner. Now, in Lowland Road, now Buddhist Union is one temple, very strange day. Two temples were given to them, free. Nowadays, you cannot get people give you temple free, you know. The land is very expensive. Uh, Jerry is bringing, looking high and low. Nobody wants to give. People all want to sell. Nobody wants to give. But Buddhist Union got two land given to them free. Interesting. And one of them I know very well is in Lowland Road, you know, in Haukang. MRT was there. Before that temple came into being, it was a monkey god temple. I sing, yeah. This monkey god, I know the, the founder when I was very small, sorry, uh, when I was very young. Okay, imagine, uh, uh, she used, they used to trance. And this monkey god seems to be very powerful. And most of her uh, sort of uh, Tai Sing, yeah, Kei Kei, uh, God's son, uh, are all well to known people. Some of them are chief justice today. Not chief justice, sorry. Uh, senior counsel, judge, and all this. Very high, very rich people. Now, this lady, one day she had a dream. Monkey God told her, I want to donate my temple to the Buddha. Then she got up from her dream and says, How to donate to Buddha? Who to give? Buddha gone. She ignored. Second time she got a dream. Then she said, How to give the land to temple? Monkey God was very insistent. So that Sunday morning, she opened up the newspaper, Straits Times, she saw a big coverage of this monk, Dhammasukha, who just came back from Thailand. It was a report that he went to Thailand to ordain and is coming back. And straight away, the thought occurs to her that this is a monk to donate this land to the Buddha. That piece of land you go and see, now it's three-story, uh, they built it to three-story. She donated the whole land to the Buddha. Not only after donating the whole land, she says, monkey god says she will not trance in the temple out of respect for the Buddha. Rare. And she got to go back to her house to do the trancing. And she became a Buddhist. She became to took refuge in the Buddha. Always from there, I learned to see some of the great miracles and people of those days. Those at that time, they have so much faith. You know, even monkey god can give the temple. Now you say no monkey god, but this one gives the land, no? I told Angie, we're going to look for another monkey god, so maybe got a chance to give us one temple. And the other temple was given, but I understand was a spirit. Also, donate to the temple. Now, after 30 over years in the Buddhist circle and mixing around, I learned one thing through all the teachers and masters. Is that the Buddha is still supreme. No one can trance. Alright, the Buddha, Tanki Lo Tang, sometimes I see people chop, they say they are this God. If a genuine Deva, they have high respect. There was at one temple, very small temple. I, I, uh, I think, okay, I can mention the name is uh, Tisarana, my old, my center. That time was very small. Someone came and uh, he was a trancer in the 1976 or 77. Alright? And he thought that his God, they call boss, 
Bhutan Temple. My boss is very powerful, the highest of all the warrior gods. You know? And uh, any gods on any deity on, uh, on, in Singapore, the deity, his own master is more powerful because he's a, like, you know, chief general, something like that. So after giving a short Dharma talk, he will ask to trance in front of the Buddha in a shrine hall. The members say, Can you please trance? And they, they want to consult. So he trance. Now, while he was trying to jump and trance and trance, he was slowly, slowly, he moved back. He walked out of the temple and he was stunned. Then later on, he came back again, did certain mambo jumbo, then said certain, and then after he stopped. I know him because he's an SGI boy who at the age of 13 became a trancer. Huh? They are not um, mambo jumbo people who believe in all kind of things, but they are selected in a way. Very good friend of my family, and so I came to know. And immediately, he came to me and he told me, he did not understand, and he says, your temple devotees also do not understand the protocol. Number one, no devas can trance in front of a Buddha image because in this Dhamma hall, there are Dhamma protectors. And it was a Dhamma protector, it seems, push him out of the temple. Alright? So that is why in Mahayana Buddhism, that's why I learned, whenever you enter the shrine hall, this shrine hall is the place of most important. You go to Zen center, they will bow first before they enter. You go to Mahayana temple, same thing, the shrine hall. You bow first before you enter. Because this is a hall where people practiced Dhamma, meditation, so it's a place of respect. And that is where the devas, it is said, whenever you have, you have all the relics, the devas will always be the protector of the relic and of the people who practice. So no one can create, uh, no even devas or all these spirits, uh, Tong Tong Chang, they don't want to come. Not possible. If they do come in, it's not true one. Uh, you ask them to take knife and you chop and you see whether what happened, they weren't there. Uh, a genuine one will have the joint practice. And that's why I learned from young that uh, Buddhism from those days very much different. And I started to attend the Sunday school. In fact, I started to uh, have a love-hate relationship with the Buddha. Love-hate because at one stage I was small. My father insisted that I attend the Dharma school. And as a young boy, I refused to always want to play exam. So fail the test. So my father slapped me once in front of the whole temple. So I was so embarrassed. I went to the Buddha. I scolded him because of you. <laughs> I got slapped. All right, I'll be your enemy. I'm very angry. And true enough, no karma, no. When I later on go to work, I became a, a what I call um, maintenance, building maintenance. And every day people school, school me back. <laughs> you get double back blessings. And I was very much against Buddhism. Because why? I find those days, Buddhism, no one could teach Buddhism in English. Very few. And everywhere I go, no Dhamma. So all hope, pokers and that sort of thing, I was very much against Buddhism. Whenever my father... Ch- you know, those days, my mother was. In a house, we have, you know, every evening, we have so many joysticks uh, to pray. Not only Buddha, got kitchen god, Right? Under table God. You, your dinner got under table, no? They say under table God. You got to pray. You got Techu Kong. No? Techu Kong got Techu Ma. Wow. Husband and wife, you got to pray. They got Kwan Kong, Kwan Im. Wow. This God, that God, dog God. So many God. So every day I and my brother will fight. If you want to see TV, you can pray lah. So we go, cha 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 cha. Don't know the meaning. I not put. Anyway, do it. Until one day, Someone came, one of my neighbor came to my house and say, Hey, do you know, he talked to my father, you know, you've been doing chanting on Mithohun and all this. Thing. Do you know that the Maitreya Buddha has come and gone? Ah, that time it really strikes me. I say, what? And this really guy belongs to Nichiren Shoshu, which is uh, Soka. Huh? He says, why don't you join? Blah, 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 blah. Those days, I think it was in 19... 19- uh, I was in secondary school, 70, 1970 or so. Alright? And he says, whatever you want, you will get. Sure or not? 
Anything that you want, you chan 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 until your eyes become glossy and shining. You got no money, you chan nam your money will come to you. So as a young boy, I say, why not join up? Go. So I went. In those days, Soka was not, how do you say, not well um, accepted. They were always in the house. So I used to attend. They give you a damuku. They chant namyo, ringe go, namyo, ringe go. The more you chant, the better it is. So join, you chant namyo, ringe go. Never mind, you must face the east. Huh? You cannot any outside. You must have a damuku. You know, a, a, a shrine. But if you don't have a shrine, you must go for a cause, must be selected, and blah, blah, blah. And every time they were gathering like this, and someone will say, I chant nam yo ho ringyo, I got cancer, I was cured, blah, blah, blah. You listen, wow, true or not? And I want to give a testimony, testimony. Everybody give testimony. All because of nam yo ho ringyo. Now I tell you, if you join me, uh, you also want to join, right? Whatever you want. Who got no problem? Uh, Jerry was still want to close one case. Try one. What to do? Nam yo ho ringyo. If he close, he become more forever in his belief, right? Everybody do have problem. So I join nam yo ho ringyo. Alright, and last time I stayed in a one room, uh, one room, one hall flat, you know, three, four, five, six fellows in a family. So sometimes I turn in the bedroom, you know, face the east. And, uh, that bedroom are crowded, so I go to the kitchen near the toilet. Until my mother was, I say, my father was angry, he says, look, I'm in the toilet, don't chant, you know, I'm your orange, I'm your orange, I'm your orange. That time was only sec one, seriously. Don't know, just want to practice, want to have the, the power. Until someone, my auntie said, look, why don't you go and learn proper Buddhism? That's where at the age of uh, 13 brought me to Mangala Vihara. That is why I say I'd like to share with you it's important to learn the Dhamma in the systematic way. You attend. Listening to talks is interesting, fun. Different speakers. Now, I also have gone through. Because different speakers today, you say, will tell you like this. Huh? Five precepts is like this. Da 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 da. Another speaker will tell you five precepts is like that. Da 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 da. Then you're confused. Now, who is right, who is wrong? And most of the time, most speakers, I can tell you, they give their own version, their own experience, and it is not based on the text. Different teachers, you get Tibetan masters who tell you differently. You get a Zen master who tell you differently. Even Theravada will tell you differently. Okay? And the rules. So finally, you attend the Dhamma class, you learn things systematically, and that's where I start to learn. And when I learned the life of Buddha, it became more and more interesting. Like you have done the chanting. So you, at that time, be interested to do chanting. And in the Theravada chant, there are so many types of sutras. Okay? Different sutra for different purpose. Ah, interesting. Uh, these are all. Uh, I'm different from probably uh, 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 NGDs. Go for, some people are interested in the Dhamma side and all that. I'm more interested in the mystical side. Uh, they say you come Bodhi Puja, you do this, this sutra is good for this, this sutra is good for that. Uh, if you want to have, uh, how do you say, your baby keep on crying, you chant this particular, Yantung Nimitang of Manglanta, you chant. You have this problem, you chant this sutra. I tell you, like learning medicine with so many panadols, you know, you don't know which one to use sometimes. So you learn for fun, learn, learn, and then you test. I tell you, it works. You try. And I like to test. Alright? And if you have sutras and you say this sutra, this one can chant this and you, and Dhamma cannot be tested, then something wrong with the Dhamma. Right? Just one word, you know, I'm sure you have read the, the sutra called the Ratna Sutta. Ratna Sutta was uttered, it is said, to clear all evil spirits. Just one word, Yang Kin Chi, my Sunday school teacher say, all the spirits will not come near. Yang kinji vitang urang wasa gesuwa yang ratanang panitang. The whole verse, you sound very long. So you say yang kinji because when the place of Vesali was infested with evil spirits, there was famines, there were doubts, a lot of people died. And they invited the Buddha, that's how the story goes, and asked the Buddha, Lord, can you come and sort of do something, you know? And the Lord says, okay, Ananda, take my begging bowl, fill it with water. And I know Ananda has one very powerful quality. He can remember everything. Just one word, one verse 
Or one time the Buddha have to repeat, he will capture memory. He has a very powerful retentive memory. So Buddha just recite one time and remembered by heart. He went around with the holy water, the begging bowl, he sprinkled. And then in Chan Yani, the Bhutani, Samagatani. Now when he come to the second verse, when he say, Yang Kinji Vithang Rwa Hurang Wa, the word Yang Kinji, it is said, all the spirits all fled. Oh, that's what Yang Kinji. So that's how you see that the tradition comes with monks with holy water bless you, right? Okay, it comes from that period of time. It's a Hindu culture and practice. So Yang Kinji, Yang Kinji, I chant. I came about as boy. I went to one day, you know, Jalan Topaya. Those days they have those roadside medium. They on Dong Chang, and then they sell medicine and all that. They have big cauldron. They use fire. They burn their hands and all kind of miracles that to sell all the Buddha images. And really, that guy went in the trance. I mean, the knife. We think he poked boiling hands. He put, yeah, true. So I say, let's test Yang Kinji. I stand behind the crowd and I chant, Yang Kinji, Yang Kinji. You cannot trance. You cannot trance. Yang Kinji, Yang Kinji, Yang Kinji. Concentrate, Buddha. Yang Kinji cannot trance, cannot trance. Because my teacher say, when you chant Yang Kinji, no trancer can trance. So I chant, 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 chant. This guy jump, 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 jump. And then after they turn around and says, he said something which I thought uh, uh, was quite uh, wrong of me. And he says, we are, like Hokkien say, Tan Jia. All right? And they are making a living. So I left. I say, oh, very powerful, my Buddha, very powerful. <laughs> Yang Kinji. I went back to my Sunday school teacher. He says, got a good scolding. He said, you are lucky. Because if you are not really cultivating and your stars is low, all right, that spirit will go after you. Ah. But the power of the sutras has power. That is for sure. Even the five precepts that you have uttered, if all the sutras you cannot remember, remember Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arato Sama Sambuddhasa. This three. Three times is enough. If you cannot remember all the sutras. Alright? Even you, in the most difficult situation when people accuse you, you know, the best way to fight against accusations when you know that you are right and then you know all the thing is to chant the five precepts, make a vow that I am right, I declare this power of truth. By this power of truth, may I be protected and may the untruth arise and clear my name. You have this firm determination and then you can chant your and you take the five precepts. Now, it is the most powerful. Very, very powerful. Alright? So, that is where I learned that even sutras have power. There are many instances I can share. Why I move into social work is not something like it's a, a calling. Now, life is strange. You do not know exactly what is your purpose. All right, why you are here? Only probably after 10 years down the road, you look back and says, Ah, that could be a purpose and a reason why I was there. I tell you, let me share with you very honestly so that I can relate with some of the Buddhist uh, fellowship members. I know the founders of Buddhist uh, fellowship, uh, one few of them as a friend. I met Angie Mansfield and I was looking at them. They have a first annual general meeting. I said, This lady is real cocky. She's a fighter. Alright? Very irrational ideas. I says, we Buddhists should have this type of character. It was only much later that I get to know her. Much later that we are involved in the year 2000 uh, conference. Okay? And she's one classic lady. Yeah? She called a general meeting once, I remember. Now, Angie Mansfield is your, your president, is it? She is one character... All right. Either you think ten times ahead of her, or you are struggling behind. She called a meeting and she said, "Hey, we organize a, a World Buddhist Conference." Oh, I said, "Sounds nice, good, I support." So call all the Buddhist organization. All the temple came. Everybody give ideas. She give ideas. Everybody say, "Good, good, 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 good." How much does the whole conference cost? Two hundred thousand. Oh, who can support? Oh, oh, look at the table, no? Suddenly the, you know, suddenly the table become very nice. Oh, great, nice. This, 
chair also very nice. Nobody want to answer. All right. Then someone asks, um, "How much do you have?" No, no money. And we are going ahead, and if two hundred thousand, ah, that takes guts, and not only I wouldn't say guts, sheer faith. You must have that faith to do dharma work. And I tell you, sometimes as a practitioner Buddhist, your faith will be tested. I use the word way, tested, truly. I'm involved in social work and your own purpose. Sometimes I look at the Buddha and say, are you sure or not? The more you do, the more problem you have. And you never know until much later than we look back and say, that was a purpose. So life purpose, actually, our entire life, look at it as a school. We come here, we learn, the people that we meet, all have a purpose. Now you look at your life from when you are a child until now, the friends that you meet, your relatives that come and go, the close ones and not so close ones and all these things, all of them at different period of your life came into being with certain purpose and reason. Strange. They all come with a purpose and reason and it is all for your own personal growth. And never get stuck to friendship. You know, we used to have best friend oh, for life, forever. Rubbish. When they get married, you see what happened. Everybody go their own way. Even if they don't get married, after some time, they will part because the purpose of the existence or the purpose of the relationship is over. We must learn to let go. That is a period of learning. If you look back at your life, every stage. So, karma, sometimes Buddhists interpret as suffering. Payment, bad Pay, uh, how do you say, bad karma means like a sin, you've got to repay back your debts and all that. I don't agree totally with that kind of thinking. Karma means cause and effect. Karma vipaka. It is a learning process. Nothing more, nothing less. It's for you to grow spiritually. Now look at all the negative karma that one has got. People say, if you're going through, you know, you go for palm reading. Okay, they tell you this period, this period. Now this is according to your karmic life. You have done certain things, you're good. But when your karmic comes, you go down. Now you study the law of karma. It's a very complex theory. Eh? You cannot say, oh, because of this, you like that. Because of that, it's like this. You know? Not so easy. There are multiple causes. Right, the tsunami. All right, two zero one two coming. Whoa, end. True or not? I mark my my calendar just in case, huh? So going to have a big party on December twentieth. All right, enjoy. What did the Buddha say about end of the world? I don't think it's going to end so fast, but there's definitely be going to be a catastrophe and earthquakes and things like that is a changing process because of the lifestyle that all of us are living. It's not your karma to a tsunami. It's everybody's karma, collective karma. The churning of energy cannot be helped. Alright? So, karma is a, merely a learning process. And I gain through the Dharma learning because I go through a phase of learning, then I come to a phase of um, seeing Dharma, Oh, not only now when I look back, uh, then say, oh, that was a purpose. I have met great monks. Great monks. I can mention one monk, Verban Narada Thera. He passed away. An old monk. Some of you may heard, he wrote many books. Whenever he came to Singapore, he will always encourage people to, to learn the Dhamma. And he will always give Buddhist name to people. You know, you're the lady, you say, sister, my daughter, young man, he says, here comes son, and he always give Buddhist name. He wants to plant a seed. And he's really a practitioning monk. I dare to say this because I witnessed it at the hospital bed. He died three times in Vietnam, Singapore, and once in uh, uh, Indonesia. Really, he was so serious, they prayed for him, he revived three times. The last time he died in Sri Lanka, a very old monk. He once he was in Singapore, he was very ill uh, in Tang Tok Singh. He was in coma for more than seven days. All of us were chanting and all that. Now, when he woke up from his coma, all right, he woke up from his coma. He's a real petitioning. I would say he followed the rules very strictly. I have deep respect for him. 
when they go out of karma and doctor was so happy, they check everything is okay, can give him some food to eat because it's already 2 o'clock. So they try to give him food. So I remember, it, this is a, a, a learning process I can never forget. He slowly lifted up his hand and his, he asked the nurse very softly, what time is it? And then they said 2.30. Then he says, no. And all of his doctor said, this is, he must eat. Because the Vinaya rule allows you to eat if you are sick. Alright? And everybody tried to encourage him and all that. He listened, listened. He's very weak. And at the time I was also saying that this old monk is very stubborn old monk, you know. Yeah? Then some say, it's better. It's okay. Then it can be a Bodhisattva. You live again. You help. And all these things. He listened to this. And then he said one thing. I can never forget. The day I became a monk, I did not break my precept, my Vinaya. If I have to die now, I will not break. I have never break my precept from the day I became a monk. If I have to die now, alright, then I die. But I won't break that determination. And he recovered. Whatever reasons, alright, he uphold his precept. So if you really want to practice the Dhamma, the Dhamma must be your life. Not pastime, not hobby. Sunday I come, evening I go elsewhere, I do something else. The Dhamma must be in your life. You experience it, actualizing it, see it, how things change, how this Dhamma affect your life. Alright? When I say practicing Dhamma, not holy, holy, show people, wow, like angels. No. Sometimes the Dhamma will guide you in such a way. Alright? For you to experience the Dhamma. Really, and see for yourself. When I was in the construction line, in the early days, in the, as a uh, young guy, the after arm uh, construction, you know, they used to go drinking nightclubs and all that. At that time, I was uh, already a Buddhist, no? The Venerable, no. Oh, you are tempted. So, I go. Nightclub, bar. So, go and see. What is bar? Alright? When I was inside, I can tell you, I can never imagine a human dignity, how men can behave. So low. Outside, all wear tie. <laughs> Inside, all like animals, you know. And come out, you're all tie. <laughs> oh, architect, engineers, and all that. But insects are terrible. And I've seen it with my own eyes and says, this is actually life suffering. How do you imagine? Alright? You know, bars, when you want to go home and all that, everybody, the ladies will crowd around you and everybody will ask for tips. If the guy likes you, he give you ten dollars, and like idiot, you know, they throw twenty dollars, fifty dollars, or they're very big. And ladies that they don't like or they're old, they will tease them away. One of them take even a, a lighter, Ting, and look at you like this, and says, "There, go, 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 go." Human dignity. That's Mara will. And later on, I realized how people pace the karma. There's one guy, four of them, I remember. Hmm? Four senior executives in Hong Leong Finance. I was uh, 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 in charge of one building in Anson Center in 1981-82. Alright? I still remember very clearly because to me it's a great Dhamma lesson. They brought in Thai girls from Thailand, introduced new ones. Alright, that time the laws, uh, tigers, prostitution was um, something. They rented an apartment very cheap, $500. Okay? And they got six, seven of these tigers. And they, prostitution. So I was asking them, hey, don't you think it's evil, bad, making money from these people? But their logic, very good. I didn't cheat them, no? In their country, they are already prostitute, no? Here, they get better money. I didn't hold their passport. I gave them an outlet, a better life. Better opportunity. Think, 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 the time young, uh, got logic. Leh. Why practice the Dharma? And they make good money. Real good money, I can tell you. Because I was in charge of the maintenance, I see how many people go up and down. Alright? 
they make good money. And one of them was sharing with me, they make something in those days, 1980, 30,000 a month net. Huh? That's damn good money, you know. Drive cars in after two months. And I tell myself, why study the Dhamma? Why practice it and become a pauper? They also do good deeds, no? I must not think it was bring, bring Thai woman here, also give them a way of life. But three to four months down the road, ah, I saw how karma comes back and takes its place. People say, Sekiyam Bokasin, true. One of them had this problem with the children. They gone, one of them was really went bonkers. You know, when you deal with all these uh, uh, vices and all these things, you had to feed gangsters, you got to feed, you know, all kinds of people. And all of them were just finished. Then, the lessons of karma. At the first, it looks very nice. So when you are riding high, when you do all these evil actions and all that, I tell you, it's very good. But the karmic effect that comes back, you cannot run. Especially today. I can tell you, the karma effect is even more faster than those the early days. In the 60s, 50s, whatever. Because today the energy move on is far, far more faster than anything. The computer age, everything, the energy is very strong. So you do something, it comes back. It springs back. So to me, that learning process is really, really wonderful. So that's how I got started. And I started going to uh, prisons, sorry, um, the girls' home as a social work. All for fun. Nothing glorious or special calling. Now it's always like that. You do a volunteer like you are volunteer here. And slowly, that's how your life evolved. And that's how slowly I got involved with this. And I can tell you today, there, the more you go into this welfare thing, I can tell you it's really sad. For mental illness, huh? because I'm looking after a social enterprise for people who have mental illness to help them to recover back to society. Government statistics. Okay? If we should. One in five or six people in Singapore all right, have mental or have problems relating to mental issues. 700,000 people is said to have mental problem or some form of mental problem. So you count an MRT, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, And you look at their face. How everybody have this stress? And we're all good. Lucky we have people like Achan Brahm. Come listen to talk. We're happy, happy. We laugh. We relax. You know, have laughter yoga because the stress is too great. 700,000 people in Singapore are affected and most of them are young ones. Huh? Young ones. And all with no job. One person without job. How much do you think to maintain this person? $300? food, medicine, don't talk about mental, talk about even other kind of illness, autism, huh? dyslexia, any kind. It's very costly to look after one person in Singapore without career, without job. That's why the government says they do not want Singapore to a welfare state. But then someone has to pay, you know. The government don't pay, yeah, but who pay? Three hundred. Just imagine if there's one hundred thousand with these disabilities, huh, a month, huh, cost the three hundred dollars just to maintain him. Can you imagine how much it is per month? It's very costly. So instead of people going down, there must be some ways to help. All right, and I feel the best way to help is we help each other. I don't believe any one of us um, cannot give a lending hand. And that is what Lama Zupa, the, the, um, the Tibetan master says, and I, I truly believe this. Our entire life is to bring happiness to others. That is Dhamma. That is Dhamma practice. Nothing more, nothing less. If we can, in some ways, and I believe that every human being are uh, kind. You know the tsunami, and also we also, uh, according to crisis, also change, you know. Tsunami first happened, Singapore raised, you know how much? 84 million cash. 84 million. 
And the government was very fast. Immediately they came in. They said, let's con- cons- consolidate all the funds. And then they give out projects. Huh? Now one tsunami after another tsunami, everybody had <laughs> become hardened already. No nation also. We don't know. We are lucky. Because we are not affected. Look at Indonesia. Until that kind of catastrophe yeah, become routine in life already. Terrible, no? Every few months, every year, since there was tsunami, whole house all collapsed. How much can you help? It's difficult. And when you are involved in Dharma work, I can tell you, now only I realize what the Master say. Practice meditation. To calm the mind to see things clearly. Okay? Because you are dealing with people. But there's one organization I thought they did very well and very good. And if we, if we Buddhists uh, in some organizations can follow that technique, I think it's very good. Goenka, the Vipassana Meditation Center in India. It's a well, worldwide organization. You know, they teach retreats and all that of Vipassana meditation. And they get volunteers to come in to cut vegetables and, and preparations. And Now we human beings, when you put together... How holy, holy you are, also something quarrel, no? Uh, the way you cut the vegetables wrong, la, da, 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 sure quarrel one. Now, going car says, when you come to that kind of situation, stop all work and meditate. The food preparation, not important. The work itself, not important. Sit down and be at peace now. Because the more agitated you are, the food you prepare is full of anger, no? And this is dumb. Same thing. If we want to do temple work, I'm sure when you organize an activities or major events, bound to have some friction. When you can have that, sit down and tell the groups it's okay. Let's please. You know the Soka Gakai, the Nichiren Shoshu movement, I tell you, I was in the movement, I can tell you there's something to learn. Every time before they go to an event, every before the function, they will gather in a room. They charge themselves up. Right? They devote everything to They chant, 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 chant. Before every event, before every situation, they sit down and chant. Because that's a belief. Can we now, before any organization, sit down and meditate before we go out? Or say a short prayer before we go out? Or do a short, a short chant to be everybody in sync before we carry out an activity. Can we have a committee meeting before we start meditate? You know, there's one Zen, Tinahan, he hold a meeting. Whenever there's an argument, there's a bell. We will argue, talk, 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 tong. And the tong means that everybody quiet. Breathe. And five minutes and continue the discussion. Tong, and that is putting into practice. Because as even human beings, we are bound to have differences. Alright? Bound to have. Even monks also have differences. Alright? Ajahn Brahm want to ordain nuns. Huh? Monks also disagree. Huh? You read internet in the Buddhist channels and different views, different opinions. Who is right? Who is right? I can't be bothered. Lah. What is important is at the end of the result, how does it benefit people? I asked my reverend, uh, a venerable, who is a, a principal of Buddhism Pali College, he explained to me the rules and regulations, and he says, actually, the so most important is the person who wants to ordain. If the lady wants to ordain, ordain. Lah. What's the problem with the male, female, or what rules? It doesn't matter. The world will have to change. So different opinions cannot run. The more Dhamma work you do, according to Mahayana, more problem you will have. Because it is said in the Sutra in the Mahayana, Buddha's power can be one feet. Mara's power is ten times. Because Mara, it is said that doesn't want anybody to spread the Dhamma or be good. More difficulty will come to you. Now I personally, I do not know why. When I say I want to be vegetarian for the next few days, suddenly my craving for meat comes. Other days, no craving. But on the very day, full of craving. Suddenly hungry, suddenly this. We face this. So, Dhamma not last minute. Nah? 
I realized that, yeah, now wasted all my last 30 years, I should have practiced slowly from last time. And slowly. But I no regret because I learned that the Dhamma is really wonderful. From personal experience and also from other people's experience, I'll see how people changed and how society changed and how people... I've seen miracles, I can tell you. How people's life really changed because of the teachings of the Buddha. One man, he was a medium. I always come to medium because <laughs> interesting because I meet all the he was a medium. The mother was a medium. Kwanin. Trans. Then the mother was ill. Alright? And then Kwanin came into his dream and says, I will take you as my disciple. It seems that the next day he could trance. He was in office and suddenly he feels so uncomfortable he rushed back. And true enough, people were there waiting and he can open talisman and all these things, he can do prediction and blah blah blah. So one day he came to the temple, they went to the Buddha, he saw everything, then after that he joined the Sunday school, learned the Dhamma. And he shared personally with me, he says, that night after learning the Dhamma, he went back. No, he took refuge. We, huh? Bedang Serenang to a monk, he says, I want to take refuge. The monk gave him a refuge taking. That night when he went back, he says, Kwanim appeared to him and told him, you have now entered the right path. From today onwards, I will release you as my transfer, as my disciple. You follow the Dhamma. And after that, he didn't trance anymore. Couldn't trance. So even Kuan Yin, somehow, whatever problems, will all come back to the Buddha. And when we say come back to the Buddha, it is the teachings that is important. Learn the Dhamma. Learn as a fun thing. Eh? Don't become too... Um, some people take it so serious. Have fun learning the Dhamma. Now, how many of you know the life of Buddha well? I can tell you, no. Eh? Why? My mother, how many years? My father, how many years? When I ask him, Buddha life story, don't know. Then, the man who changed your life, you don't know about him? You must know. If today Acham Brahmo is going to be your religious master, make sure you know his background, right? Because religion controls your mind. And this man controls your mind. The way you live, the way you walk, your, your entire belief. And you don't know about him? Forget the Dhamma sign. Do you know the Buddha first? Do you know his life story? What inspired him? How did he lead his life? That is our inspiration. I draw my inspiration from more on the life of Buddha. You know, when the time when he was uh, practicing the Dhamma, he was about to die, struggling. It was greatest inspiration to me because whenever I have problem, all right, I always think of that situation. He was struggling. He was nearly at the point of death. Mara came and says, Lord, why don't you give up? Walk the path, become a prince. You can still do a lot of good deeds. But Buddha said, no. My shield, I have a shield, and that shield is my meta, my determination. Even I have to die, I will practice and try to attain enlightenment. Even I don't attain enlightenment, I will not give up. At that determination. And who don't have problem? We will, every stage of our life, you realize that you will have to face certain problems. Until you learn that lesson, okay, that problem will come again and again and again in different form. I don't like you. But you happen to be in my office. I don't like to deal with you. I go to another office. I meet someone similar like you. Will never change. When I was in the army, the recruit days, I met this guy. I don't like him. Roommate. Terribly irritating. When after the three months, I thought, ah, good luck. Go and join the vocational. Meet him again. Same platoon again. Then what did the Dhamma say? Never mind. Another two months. No more. We go to vocational for the next one and a half years. Go to the same camp again. How long I say, we to karma. No, sometimes people can be so irritating, you want to get away. But the Buddha say you have to learn that lesson. So find out and later on, use the Dhamma and experience. I tell you, Dhamma, you can experience it and have fun. Okay? It's not always so 
serious stuff. Alright? So I I don't know whether I have any art of living, but uh, in the terms of giving, but those of you who wish to do social work, I would always encourage you, please do. Alright? Don't start with uh, great ideas when people can't tell me, oh, because I want to do attain enlightenment, this is that, 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 these people wouldn't last. It's like Coca Cola, no? Psst. They all come, then after the psst, no energy. It's like that. You see many, it's like that. They come and go, come and go. And when people come, don't hang on to them. They have to go, let them go because their karma, their purpose is gone. It's not they are right or they are wrong. We have to let go. A new one will come. Alright? Now, Buddhist temple, very strange, huh? I can tell you. It's always a question of affinity, yenfen, temple. Huh? Some people stay the east, they'll go to the west temple. Those from the west will go to the east. Strange. Why? I cannot understand. You make a, a, a demographic figure and you compare where you come from from there. In Katong area, nobody will go to Katong temple, no? They don't go to the east, they go to the west. It's like that. It's Yenfen. Then I realize this is all part of Yenfen. You come here, you have your own fellowship, your own friends, and you think you can uh, click. Huh? Ah, that is what it's all about. Alright? And that's why people come to temple. They come to work. After some time, you see all temples also have their own gossip. True? Problem. I learned one thing. And I want to share with you. Any position that you go in commercial society, especially welfare or religious my lesson taught me not more than five years like you stay in this position. Ego will come in. Sure. I seldom like to give Dhamma talks because of one important lesson in life. And I try not to. And I always say, we cannot give Dhamma talk as a person because you must really practice. Or else what happened? What I learned is from books. No? What I'm going to tell you is from books. No? Not from my knowledge. No? You think I have, wow, this guy. But actually it's from books. From an author, from somebody else, not mine. And it's important for you to learn the Dhamma and learn what is proper. Whoever, I hope they have a, a, a systematic courses, you attend and learn the life of Buddha, the main teachings, and from there you learn. All right? I learn because I learn Pali because can show off. Huh? You can chan chan chan, wow, this guy no Pali. Huh? Huh? But these are not my knowledge, not my wisdom, not my experience. It's different. Once I was talking in the temple, giving a talk on loving kindness. Now, loving kindness, everybody likes to talk, right? Easy, may all beings be well and happy. That day I was talking and deep down in my heart, I say, Chris, are you a bullshit or not? <laughs> How well is loving kindness? And what I can share with you now, I can only quote from the text. But can you feel loving kindness? How do you give loving kindness? How do you experience it? How do you actualize it? How do you manifest it? So I was talking, I knew something. You know, something you teach, the heart, the mouth, the mind, uh, don't synchronize. Uh. True? We are all like that. Even, you know, you go for interview, you go like uh, friends, you know, oh, you're very nice, oh, wonderful, we have people like you. But deep down says, actually, I don't need you. The people are very fluent with nice speeches, but they are not true to the heart and mind. So that week, I remembered, I went to a friend's house. I didn't know he, they have adopted a Down syndrome autistic boy. Okay? The minute the door was open, this little boy, you know Down syndrome they look like? Hmm? Bah, face, the mongoloid and all that. And straight away, the child put the hand like that. And straight away, I... Right? Because the trouble in Singapore is we don't see disabilities in, the, in Singapore. So, right? Our government uh, has created the impression Singapore is like utopia, paradise. Everybody able, all very young. You know, like Buddha's time, uh, all young people, intelligent, high profile, and all the disabilities all hide one corner. Hide, hide, hide. They don't integrate. So the minute I see this boy like that, it sort of shocked me. Ugh, the feeling. And the talk came in. Where's your meter? Where's your meter? In that day onwards, I told myself I should not talk Dhamma. If I like, I can share 
testimonies. Because to practice the unless is genuinely, I can really understand this. Once I went to a psychic lady in Malacca. Someone introduced me and he says, Go, I, because I want to test her because he, they see this lady very powerful. Can read thoughts, can read this. So I went there quietly sitting quietly. And she's a great practitioner, it seems. So she was talking, 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 and suddenly she turned to me and says, You do a lot of work for temple, huh? Da, 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 da. Can you tell me what is the purpose and why you've been doing all these things? Oh, I was very happy. <laughs> Yes, I've been doing this Dhamma work, you know, I pray Dhamma, da 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 well, This old ego came out, no? Oh, I did all this. Suddenly he says, okay, enough. The Buddha told it you to do marketing for him. And that really shocked me, you know. We propagate the Dhamma, we must uphold the Dhamma. Buddha don't need you to do this. If he wants, like that. The Devas, like that. Buddha want you to practice. wonderful. That was real awakening. When Buddha, then I come back to the life story of the Buddha. When Buddha was enlightened, when he goes out, he did not go, Kong Kong Cheng, come, come, I got the truth. He went to see the first five monks. Because they are capable of learning. And then Buddha taught these five monks, sit down. Let me teach you the Dhamma. This is what I have learned and experienced. I want to share with you now. Come on. And from there he grew. One after another, because of his character, because Asaji, one of the five monks, uh, his complexion is so different. You know, when you see those days, you can imagine when the monks and uh, Brahmins come together, they have different behavior and character. Alright? Monks all clean shaven, Buddhist time, all the nails all must cut. Yeah, next time you come, Acham Ram come, you, 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 you study. <laughs> Seriously, you observe. Oh, all the monks come here, you see whether they nails cut properly or not. And see how, because they are supposed to keep all this clean. And the way they eat, alright, are different. They cannot, like the Vinaya rule says, they, they bring the food to the mouth, and not the mouth to the food. They have a way of doing it. They cannot eat until, uh, like that. they cannot burp. Okay, whatever been offered, they have to take. They cannot make noise, even lunch, for example, dana. All right, when the monks have proper dana, they don't talk. They try because they have to be mindful of, of eating and things like that. It's a training. Whereas the Brahmins in those days, those even today in India, the, the yogis, they keep long hair, the fingernails are very dirty. So people can see the difference. Ah, this is Gautama disciple. This is this disciple, that disciple. Different characteristics, different behavior. And all masters tell you, if you really want to choose a teacher, you must take years to study, at least in the Tibetan, 12 years uh, to make sure whether this monk is really a good teacher or not. Not anyhow go and choose monks. I know the Tibetans, I asked the masters in Singapore, they are all guru, Rinpoche follower, no? Oh, this monk good, chong, or go, want to become disciple, disciple, disciple. Yeah, it's like collecting <laughs> talisman, no? Ah, this is my guru, this is my guru, because so many guru. People believe and people want that. And that's a Tibetan. Right? Even one boy, Rampuche, reborn. Alright, everybody go and see. Until the Lama say, What? All of us are so Rampuche. Your past life was so right, you reborn, right? So you're also Rampuche. Alright? But it is the quality of the person. Even the Tibetan masters they know even you can be identified as a Rampuche, that doesn't mean you are have the qualities, no? You have to study whether in this life the condition around you will change you or not. So if your affinity is once with the Dhamma, then that is your life. Take the three refuge. Very important from a monk. It's different from normal chanting. Normal days. You have to have a day where you go in front of a master or a monk and says, Venerable, I would like to take refuge from you. And that is why in the Mahayana, oral transmission. Buddhism, that's why Buddhism has a lot of talk. Because Dhamma can only be transmitted by word of mouth. Dhamma can be actualized by, that's why people listen to Dhamma talk. Even you cannot understand, if you want to pick up something, sometimes one hour talk, but that one minute or the two certain words this teacher has mentioned, it clicks. 
and it change your life. And that will remain with you for the rest of your life. And Dhamma becomes your life practice. Do not change because you have problem. Okay? Don't I have seen Buddhist teachers, uh, sometimes in trouble and all that, uh, they take up Buddha pen and they throw. Seriously. And I was wondering, how can they do that when they know the Dhamma where the Buddha say everything has problem? You can grumble today every day. Look at Buddha and quarrel. He's close, close, close. He's just smiling at you. This, this is Anicca. You know, in Mahayana temple, they have a Maitreya Buddha outside with a big stomach. Why is he always outside in Mahayana temple? There's a reason why they put the Maitreya outside. He always laughing. You come in. The first person you come in, he laughs. Ha ha. You come in, right? And then you pray, oh, I got this problem. I go, ha ha. He laughs. Not laughing belly. Laugh. He says, life is full of suffering. Right? Laugh. And all our problems, our own ignorance, our own problem. You can't help it. So Mahayana, when he arranged it, it's very nicely done. Maitreya Buddha is always right in front. Don't go and rub the stomach. Huh? <laughs> it doesn't work. You laugh. It's true. My own mother can tell you when she got a headache, she rub the Buddha head. Then she rub her head. I said, why you do that? Because I got a headache. You tell the bante. So can take away all my headache. Then she stomach, she rub the stomach. And it works to her. But I said, this is psychological. <laughs> See, in Singapore, we have all kinds of practices and very funny. And I feel that temple is not doing justice to people when they don't teach people proper Dhamma. If every temple can teach Dhamma a little bit, new moon or full moon, okay, it really benefits people. Alright? You go to Waterloo Temple, you see the weird faces of people holding joysticks to pray. Alright? And people chew chum. Come on. I myself also go. I tell you when your time go, ah, yeah, anything also can. Shake, 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 chum. Sometimes they're very true. But it doesn't work. So is your life controlled by this? It takes a lot of strength to be like the Buddha and says, I walk this path. It's not easy. That is why you need chanting. That is why you need devas who come and help from time to time. When you all do recitation, you dedicate at the end of the day. Right? May all the devas, because sometimes these devas come and help and people rely. But when you place too much emphasis and that is where problem comes in. You become missing. You want shortcut. Right? Bodhi tree. I know I brought a family who says Bodhi tree is supposed to be full of um, miracles. I've seen miracles and I've seen mi- oh, things, things doesn't happen. Alright? This women praying to the Bodhi tree. Every day we we'll go to the Bodhi tree, go around three times, get caught. Uh, seven candles, seven uh, kind of lotus uh, flowers, different colors. And all these things, oil, right? The monk will chant every day. Still, the wife died of cancer. Some have miracles happen. So, what is right, what is wrong? Who is, is there a power? I say, yes, to me personally, my personal life, yes. Whatever certain wishes I pray, it works. And I say, it's nothing wrong to come even to the Buddha. I will always encourage old people or elderly. I says, you come here, you don't ask them to meditate. You can never meditate. Ask them to look at Buddha and talk to Buddha. They're very happy. Ah, poopy, ah, they shake their hands and all that kind of thing. They like. Ah, then you, you throw water at them. The more water you throw, the whole body wet. Ah, they say, good. They are very happy. That's why they all go Thai temple. Achan, no brown, no water. <laughs> Only talk only make you happy, right? But you go Thai temple, cha cha cha, wow, you know, they don't use flowers, they use a kind of uh, rice straw, ah, more water, cha cha cha, you feel very good. They give you this, they give you that, they go back, it's a psychological kind of thing, but people need that. But there is one step at a time that you gradually, and you must lead this person back to the Dhamma. Two interesting story. then I stop. All right. Once there was a Zen master. He has a very good teacher. Eh, sorry, a very good student. And this student was uh, very fascinated with the master. He'd been practicing Zen and all that. 
And one day he came to the master, he was very gloomy. And the master asked him, why are you sad? He says, I have a big problem with my father. Why? I've been trying to ask him to come to the temple and then the Dhamma and blah, blah, blah. And he doesn't run and he's uh, complain, complain, complain about the father. He says, you want to change the father to the Dhamma. Then the master says, okay, this master Shong San uh, from uh, Korea. He says, what does your father like? What does he do? He says, well, my father likes to drink whiskey. Oh, very good. Next time you see him, you bring a bottle of whiskey. He says, Pastor, can I? I petition. Never mind, bring a bottle of whiskey. Drink with your father. Oh, what does your father like? My father likes to smoke cigar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you drink and smoke with him. Oh, this is our teacher. I also want to follow. No? <laughs> I can't run. I want to be this. No choice. He go. Go with him. He continue your practice, but every time you see your, your father, do this. And what does your father like? He likes to talk about politics and world and all this. Don't talk. You can talk anything with him, but not the Dhamma. So really, okay. So you follow the master. He doesn't. He every time he sees his father. Hi, dad. So say, why? You holy, holy. You no more. You bring whiskey and drink and talk and smoke with the father. Like good old times. Get drunk and laugh. One day, week after another week. Until one day, the master, the father say, this temple that you go uh, at this uh, Chu Chang Road. Uh, what is that? What temple is that? Oh, that one is called, oh, this, this, this. We are practicing Buddhist. What is that? What is Buddhism? What is Dharma? Then slowly he start to teach. And the father said, maybe one day I follow you. That's it. Go. So he says, Zen master says, is sometimes you need to follow, you lead the cow, you follow the cow. Halfway through, you pull the cow back to the right path. But the danger is, you don't follow the cow. <laughs> and then you go, you don't come back. <laughs> then you must to practice, you know. That's where the foundation of the Dhamma must be strong. That is the only way you can get, you cannot get everybody to follow you in the MRT station, you take sutras, you take this, you chan chan chan, you think people say, Siao, this fellow. <laughs> True, I've seen people like that. I say, Sometimes I think not necessary. It's not necessary. Alright? Dhamma practice is inside. So sometimes you have to be with these people. But your deep down, you must know your foundation. Whatever it goes, you come back. What's your intention? What's your motivation? Very important. All right? And that's where the Mahayana say, you go out like Kuan Yin. If the person is a thief, I will be a thief. If the person is an animal, I will be an animal. All right? Because I want to help this person. I've seen, if you're done with the girls in, in girls' home, I can tell you they're terrible. Tattoos. Okay? They were among and sitting down. The young teenage was they wear skirt, they purposely come and sit right in front with the leg open like this. Joke aside. Real tears. They are very challenging. After one time, two time, third time, suddenly this lady, huge, came forward and says, I want to talk to you. I also got scared. And he relate to a council with the monks and she cried. She was read when from at the age of ten until she 18, she ran away from home those days. The, the uh, support system in Singapore was not there. And you know how traumatic it is for them to behave that way? Terrible. And everybody appeared inside. And she cried. When I follow those guys and my bosses, they come, let's go nightclub and all that. I talk to the girls, you chant, oh money, pay me home. They say, can I say, inside the bar, you can chant. As you drink, oh money, pay me home, you drink. That is you are there. What else can you do? Om Mani Pemi Om you drink. But every time you Om Mani Pemi Om in your heart, doesn't matter. Kwani doesn't go to, to ban you just because you are there. Wherever you are, you can always practice, you can always reach out to somebody. Okay? So, Tamma Achan, I tell you this was in Singapore, the one is in Korea. I tell you the one in Singapore, the, the chief high priest of um, Wat Ananda. Chao Kun. Now everybody thought Thai monks got power, right? In the early days, people see Thai monks, they scared. Huh? Thai monks can do Kong Tao. Ah, right? Everybody go. They got this flower, say, Chang Chui, bathing. Someone that they listen to, because you want to change bella, go and bathe. I say, give me the flower, I bathe myself. Why do I need a monk to bathe for you? 
They believe in this. In Thai tradition. And they clear their bad karma you are going through. So, Chang Chui flowers and all this. They all like Thai monks. Thai monks got power. Alright, that's why they do chanting. They don't teach people chanting. But if you know, really know what that sutras they chant, actually nothing, no? It's very simple. You and me also chant, no? But because they chant in Pali, it becomes power. Even today, I ask people, they say, hey, they want to chant. Very good. Why they chant? Bawa to Sabah Manggalang. This one we also know. Namo Tasa. We also know. But to them who do not know Buddhism, are fascinated with it. So this business guy in People's Park, you know, he opened a restaurant. Business was doing very well until suddenly an opposite one also opened a similar kind of uh, Chai Peng. Uh, and uh, was doing business and his business was gone. You know, affected. So he was very angry. He was, when business was good, he was very grouchy and scolding people. And when business was bad, it's even worse. So he went to see Achen, uh, Chao Kun. Chao Kun, please give me something to do something. Come and bless my, my, my place. That stupid shop. Opposite, you know, have taken my luck. Can you do something to pull back the luck? Can you put something, mirror or something like that, you know, suck back, you know, the feng shui people want that, right? Suck back, they ask to do this. So, Ajahn Chaupun say, okay, and they don't want normal monks, they want the chief monk, because chief is supposed to be more powerful. So, Chaupun say, go there, Chan, then did some writing on the thing, you know, do, do everything. Chaupun, you must teach me what to chant. When I face the enemy, eh, I chant, 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 the customer come to me. You know, when you're desperate, Chao Kun says, no, you mita, mita, loving kindness. No, 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 no. I chant, I want to come to the customer. So, pastor, pastor, until Chao Kun says, okay, 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 I teach you this. But, you cannot, uh, you must follow certain rituals. Uh, become more serious, huh? So, the guy says, yeah, 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 I want. So, I chan says, every morning, you stand at the main gate, you look straight into that opposite shop. And then you chant. Sabe sata skita hontu. Sabe sata skita hontu. Because you don't know the meaning. So then he says, yes, Chokun. Very powerful. Every morning, you stare and you stare at the owner. You stare at the owner and you say, Sabe sata skita hontu. So quite far away. So every morning he practice that. Now the other owner look at him, Sabe, Satato, maybe he wishing good morning, he said, hello, good, good morning. And <laughs> true story, related by Chakun, and eventually they became friends. And the, the enmity is gone. The enmity is gone. So you can see in Singapore, there are so many people still have a lot of um, uh, misconception of Buddhism. Tremendous! You meet your friends, your office, and all these things. A lot of them has misconception, and it's very important that each and every one of us learn a little bit, share a little bit, okay? Pick it up, teach a little bit. Doesn't matter. Don't need to ask them to come. I always believe don't need everybody to come to one temple. Where you go, that is where your affinity is. Most important carries the dharma. When you have your meal in your office. Do dedication. It's very important. Monday I have a chance. I can show you why eating, eating, all this must pray. Alright? My Christian friends, they always thought I'm a Christian. Say, no, I'm a Buddhist. We can also, we don't need to put other, like but, you know, quietly we can dedicate the meal. Very important. And we put that little, little bit of practice and explain every opportunity to people when this is, Buddhism is like that. You know, we explain why joysticks. I'm asking you, why people Buddhists carry three joysticks? Buddha Dhamma Sangha. When people die, how many joysticks? Tampu two. Why two? Why you put flowers? Why you put water? Why fruits? Why you chant? Why bow three times? Why this five point prostration? All these things. You explain why Mahayana wear black. Alright, now here in, in Buddhist fellowship, you know, you have male, female. You go to Mahayana, you have. Female one side, male one side. Uh, male must be on the right hand side. Uh. Uh, then female must be on the left hand side. You cannot cross. Things like this. So different temples have different culture. And it's very interesting if you want to learn more. From different temples, go and learn. So that's all I have for my testimony sharing. If you have any questions, I would like to share. And please, if you have any questions, if I can... 
yes. So, and I can tell you that powerful or chanting, it does work. I wouldn't say it does not work. Alright? Especially when funeral works, they say, you chant, 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 the body becomes soft. Okay, they based on testimonies. Chinese New Year, alright, no, not Chinese New Year, 1st of January, Pasir Panjang. They were headquarters here, you know. Okay, you must be invited to go. Huh? You must have a ticket. Huh? Not everybody can go. Huh? On that day, they will invite and then everybody will go. They have members lining up from the roadside to the temple inside. The minute you come in, on both sides are, hello, welcome, welcome. They, they, wow, like VIP, you know. They follow you to the temple. Temple is beautiful. Alright, and then they will chant, and then suddenly the, the altar will come out. Very high tech, eh? So when they come out, the chant becomes louder. Look, me hoaring, me hoaring, me hoaring, they go louder. Then the thing opens up, they saw the wording, wow, the fervor, me hoaring, Emotions. And at the end of the day, someone will come and talk, I got cancer, I was cured, I got this, I got problem. It's based on testimony. Go for the teachings. They are valuable teachings. Very interesting Dharma teachings in Soka. Okay? But that teaching, the only thing I disagree with them is, they say Nichiren is the new Buddha. Sakyamuni, gone. One Japanese lady told me, Buddha is like the candle, the power. Soka, Nichiren is like the electricity. More powerful. True or not? I don't know. But if you are ready to study the nature and how the lineage came about, then you find that there actually is a lot of problem. He was nearly, he was actually exiled. He died in the exile. It was his disciple who, who popularized his teachings. All right? The President Ikeda came to Singapore several times. He's a very rich man. The minute he go to airport, you know, bankers will follow him. This is a marketing skill. In Nichiren, I think there are about 70 or 700 Nichiren sects. Different, different groups. So what is Singapore Soka? It's just one of the group. One only. That's all. So you have to read it. That's why I say join any organization. Make sure you know the history. How they go about. What were the changes like? Even BF. How did BF start it? Why do they want to start the temple? Chapa Botajicho, they want to start something. Alright? Got nothing to do. Actually, this Buddhist actually started with a group of graduates. Got nothing else better to do. Honestly, they all come to do less a fellowship because a Buddhist graduate fellowship. Okay, very nice. Then it's grow, it grows, it grows, and that's where, but there's a higher purpose. There's always a higher purpose in life. Yeah. They are the most, because they say the era has come, and that era belongs to the Nichiren. And that's why he came in my house and says that the Buddha has come and gone. That's why I was very interested. And that means this Nichiren is the new Maitreya Buddha. Will the world end according to the scriptures of the Buddha? The world will not end. Because Maitreya will come. And before Maitreya comes, you see, the world has one cycle. This universe itself. This universe will have four Sama Sambuddhas. Our Sakyamuni is the third. So one more is Maitreya. When Maitreya comes and disappears, the whole universe will end with a big bang. Alright? Like a big bang. Boom! All the stars, planets, all will come together, will suck up with a big bang, and there will be what you call a Sintia period, total darkness. Total darkness. Then like, billions and billions of years will come again, there was another big bang. And then planets will form, and this this is mentioned in this sutra called Aganya Sutta. Where Buddha did say it, how the world. So two zero one two, don't, 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 and give up your property, but you donate all to Buddhist fellowship. We have a big party for you. All right. If by the time the world don't end, maybe we give you fifty percent. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it has been very interesting talk. Uh, let's uh, say sadhu three times for uh, for Christopher. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So let us dedicate the merits that we all have acquired with this Dhamma sharing with all the devas and sentient beings, the protectors of the Dhamma community of Buddhist fellowship. 
May the merits that we all have acquired, may we share this happiness with one and all, and may we ourselves daily achieve our highest potential for the benefit of all sentient beings. Akasata Chabumata Devanaka Mahidika Punyantang Anumuditwa Sirat Arakan Tulukasasanang Sar. Thank you.